All right, so this Hercules router, this thing has just got all kinds of features that I don't see on the website, I don't see on the box. So I've been using this for several days now. I've been shot a bunch of videos, but I want to make this quick and simple just because this is what we got. All right, one of the very first thing with the plunge router, I want a nice smooth, this thing pretty close to buttery smooth. Um, if you see my review I did on the rigid plunge router, it was horrible. That's why I sent that one back. This one here, we got a super nice, super smooth plunge. So you put in your bit, you rotate this over here to the top. Put it down. So you put it down until your bit hits the, the, the surface. And then we can lock this in. Then we got this little indicator here, you slide it down. And so then, yeah, you can rotate this here, and then that gets you a quarter inch. And you can see, you know, where it's going. You go another quarter inch, boom, there's quarter, half. And then we rotate that around. Three quarters of an inch drops, so we can stagger down three times. Gives us three quarters of an inch. It feels pretty solid side to side. All really good uh, stuff there. You do have, I would say this is a middle of the pack. I've seen a lot cheaper uh, edge guides. Uh, I've seen better edge guides uh, on the plunge base here. We probably want to go in on this side. You know, you come in and then you have you know, a couple of wing nuts here that you can tighten up, put it in, tighten that back down. Again, perfectly ad adequate for an edge guide. Being that this would be how you was holding it to the front, they have this little chip guard so that whenever you're down looking, you know, that helps keep the chip flying out of your face. However, it does come with this particular dust guard. This dust guard whenever you place it in here and in the pack instead of most all other routers you have to get a screwdriver and screw in the dust guard this one has the little knurled screws so you can sit here drop these little knurled screws in that's two of them and whenever you screw that in that completely encloses almost uh, the entire area around, so it's sucking through all these holes on the bottom. And so the only place that any dust can come back up is right through this center hole, depending on the size of the bit you have, whether or not any dust can make it up. I did some engraving with this thing. Did not have a single piece of dust anywhere. Now also, you see this hole is not real big. This hole is designed to take in the copper bushings. So if you want to do like sign making, you want to do inlays, you got to have a base that will accept these little bushings. Well, the plunge base, which is what you're going to want, bushings fit in perfectly on it. Also, on the fixed base, we have another one here that the bushings fit in. So you can use this on your fixed base or if you're using a larger router bit, it also comes with a two and a half inch plate. So you have two plates that comes with one where you're using your smaller diameter. You know, if you're going to use a smaller router bit like this, you would use the smaller plate. If you were going to use a larger router bit that wouldn't fit around here, you would go ahead and use this two and a half inch plate. You know, so like a big round over like this, you know, won't fit through. So that's where you would use the larger plate. But this way you can use a bushing for either the fixed base or you can use it for the plunge base. So something that I have, I don't know how many routers, they all come with these little cheap, uh, you know, stamped metal wrenches here. So, you know, and these are always real thin metal and get your hands. Well, this thing has got a actual plastic handle on it, nice and smooth. And that way you can actually grab this and tighten that down without getting to your hand. 
haven't seen many other routers with something like this. That's a really nice feature, something they didn't have to do. Probably doesn't cost but a couple of pennies, but nobody else is doing it. Well, some are, but the majority are not doing that. And I just think that that kind of shows where they're trying to step up and give you these extra little features. So on the router itself here, you've got this little sight glass. That's telling you if the tool has power. So like if I sit here and I plug in the router, you see the green light comes on. That's telling me that this router has power going to it. And so when I grab my tool, I know it's energized. You know, um, you know I know it's plugged in. Now, when I turn it on, you see we got three nice LEDs that are uh, right around inside here, lights it up really good. So that's the majority for our plunge base here. I don't know, there's so many different little things in here that I may even be missing them because as I was working with this tool, I'm like, oh, that's a nice little uh, feature. Um, noticed that a couple of different times. So, you have your regular fixed base. Another little nice feature is they've got this little black arrow right here. And then on your spindle, you got a nice little black arrow right here. You line your two arrows up and then it comes in. So you've got your button right here. If you notice, there's three locking spots. So when you drop this here in, where's my arrow? Right. You push this down and now that locks in then you can use your adjustment. So <clears throat> one turn of the big knob is a sixteenth of an inch. <clears throat> but then if you want your micro adjustments, you get this little knob and one turn of that is one thirty seconds of an inch. So you can fine tune, you know, one sixty fourths of an inch here, just coming up just a little bit. <clears throat> it makes it really easy to do. So now you have the movement, but if you need to go a lot of movement <laughs> you can push the button slide it to the next notch slide it down to the third notch and this gun is going to give you about <clears throat> two inches of up and down drop so we can go you know two inches deep now with the third grip right here so let's slide this up here to where we're locked in and this is a little feature that I don't know why they didn't, they don't put on the book. All right, so we're locked in here. So if you noticed right here, our chuck is above our base plate right here. Well, say you want to mount this underneath your table. You can come up here and mount them. I've done that many times before. And what I always had to do, take these screws here out, drill some holes, and then use these holes to go through my table. Well, I checked them. These three holes right here are threaded. Now it's flush on the surface here, but these three holes are threaded. So if you want to mount this in a tabletop, you just take this little plate, or take this one here, put it up there, mark your holes, the tapered ones are the ones in the router and then these three are the other ones so you drill those down through your table drop you some screws and in those screws there's holes already in here and then this will mount right up underneath your table so now you want to adjust the height you know it's a pain in the butt having to reach under here turn the knob and all well you know what just grab you a little allen wrench here and They've got this uh, threaded rod here with an Allen wrench chuck and there's a hole through the base plate so that you can have the hole in your tabletop and you can reach through that tabletop and adjust your height up and down. Now it's not the same as a router lift table but you know, you're not paying $250 for a cheap one. Both this one and here has these nice um, it's not a hard rubber, it's a, and it's not a soft rubber, but it's like a hard, solid handle with a nice, soft 
rubber overlay so it feels really uh, nice on your hand it's got that real soft um, filling but yet it's solid and doesn't move so you know the both of these handles are really nice now I don't know why on this they put the screws which is what everybody else does but then on this one here if you want to use your edge guide you slide it through and then they have some nice little um, handles here to where you can open this up quick access boom you know you want to move it slide it out a little bit you can move it so um, don't know if really that was needed or not but they put it in there so I'm gonna show you um, I was kind of worried when I first got it that those little things were going to get in my way flopping around but you know one I'm holding back here and I've got this side to me so I haven't noticed it when I was routing so everything seems to work great on that so now this one it does suck really good if you're coming up around because it can only come through here but yet it is a small restriction right there that all the uh, sawdust has to come through when I was doing my inlays I was having a little bit of sawdust staying trapped down inside the grooves um, I would have to stop blow it out or take my vacuum vacuum it up and then go back over it again to make sure I was able to get good and tight because the bit would get that sawdust trapped up in there and not get all the way into the corner on this one let's see whenever you want to hook up and now this is a solid one piece you got to put your hose on here and it's an inch and a quarter I don't know why routers always do an inch and a quarter my hose is always an inch and a half so they never fit I always have to do some weird stuff so I got like this um, rockler hose here that'll stretch over to, uh, to get into the smaller hoses but this little piece comes with it and what it does is it goes in here locks and twists so if you got your hose you can have it connected onto the little piece of plastic and so you don't have to have that hose connected the whole time while you're dragging this around you get set up and then right before you get ready to cut you just put it in in a little twist and we're locked in so that's another good little feature another weird thing is, is they've got like a grill across here which if you get large chips and stuff come off that will block those chips so great that they got this where it's removable can lock in and out but really weird that they have that uh, in there so all in all a really good router so what I'm going to do now is you can stop it turn off the video or I'm going to show you the not so great side so I didn't want this to kind of skew the video too much, but I did want to leave it in here. As you see, this board is like two inches thick. That's pretty thick. This is just a massive bit. It's two inches plus. It's over an inch in diameter. It's got like 22 flutes on it, and it takes away a massive amount. You see, I've got my pattern kind of about a half inch away, so I'm just taking out a ridiculous amount of wood but as you see there it stopped it just stopped dead i had this issue i called tech support they couldn't figure it out so i ended up went back in and out of the store five minutes had a new router came in did the same exact thing figured out that it's the circuitry in there for an overload protection it wasn't hot uh, it did it right off the bat but when you turn it off and turn it back on it resets and everything's fine but if you do try to put too much of a blade on there, it will shut the router down until you reset it. Now I went ahead and tried to push this thing and make sure that it wasn't like a defect and it was going to just shut off every few seconds. And so I did a half inch round over one pass, pushing it a lot faster than what you would normally do if you're trying to make a good cut just to see if it was going to, you know, shut off again. And it never did. The only time I had the overload kick in was when I was using that big you know, hoss of a bit there. And as you see here, I was doing a quarter inch deep lettering 
and you don't see any sawdust whatsoever with this particular attachment the thing worked perfectly so all in all it's a very good router uh, got all the options you know I've seen these options on other routers but usually they have one or the other I haven't seen all these options in one router so they did a really good job of bringing all the nice uh, little extras into one piece and um, definitely I don't think you'll be uh, dissatisfied if you was to buy this right so as always you know if you find something that you disagree with put it down in the comments I'm very open to other people's opinions and if you like to give me that thumbs up and if you want to subscribe that's always appreciated thanks again till next time